G'day everyone, Connor here from CW's Tech Reviews, back with another video. And finally today, we've got the Galaxy S8 Plus review. It's not late, it's right on time. I've been using this device for three months, you're going to get an honest review. So let's just get straight into it. Now, as we're getting started, make sure you hit that like button, share, comment, all that stuff. First thing I'm going to cover is the design of this device. And as you can see, it is a beautiful looking device. Front, back, top, bottom, all over. It is absolutely beautiful. I've got the Orchard Grey for this one. It comes with 6.2 inch display, corn and Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and on the back. It has an 84% screen to body ratio. We love it. Bezel-less, almost bezel-less. Probably the best way I could describe this device is to say it is sharp and it is sexy. It turns heads. People look at this device the moment it's not in a case, but there's one thing you've got to remember. Three months worth of use, that's a lot of fingerprints. I've always got one of these on standby. I'm always giving it a rub. I've always got my little phone cleaner out. And as you can see, the light changes on that. Depending on the lighting in the room or outside, it's the colour of the Orchard Grey will change as well. So really impressed with the design. Amazing Samsung, you're ahead of the game. The next thing we're going to look at is the hardware. This thing is running the Exynos version and it's the 8895 Exynos. It's running the Mali G71 and it is an octa-core CPU inside of it. We've got 12 megapixel camera on the back, 8 megapixel on the front. It has 64 gigs of storage and 4 gigs of RAM. One of the things I love about this, headphone jack. Read it and weep everyone else. Headphone jack is still in the game. It also comes with a 3,500 milliamp hour battery, which I will touch on later in the review. Now a new segment I'm bringing into my reviews, which I think is worthwhile bringing up and it needs its own place in a review, is the security features of a device. And this can cover a couple of different areas. We're talking the software, uh, is it getting the latest security patch updates from, from Android and is Samsung pushing them out fast enough? And what is there to protect it? So with this, you've got your normal pattern, pin, password. You've also got your fingerprint scanner, which is a pain in the backside on the Galaxy S8 Plus. It's in a terrible spot. And I would say every time I unlock with my finger, I'd have to do it twice to get it to work properly. The other option we have with the Galaxy S8 Plus is the iris scanner so i'm just going to have a quick demo on the iris scanner so you can see that took about two to three seconds see that again is a pain in the ass now kudos to samsung for going out and above and taking risks with things like this but it's half baked i love that it's an iris scanner i love that security feature but when i've got to do this in public to unlock it a little bit embarrassing not really my cup of tea the fingerprint scanner isn't embarrassing, it's just a pain in the ass to press that button three times for it to recognize your fingerprint. It should be done the first time. And I'd have to say that Samsung has been good. We're currently in the first day of August as of filming this, and I have the June security patch update. So July security update is currently one day overdue, because we're in the first day of August. So I'm really happy with how Samsung has been pushing out software updates and security patch updates as well. It's still running Android 7.0, but the security patch is currently at security patch level Android 1st of June 2017. Let's see how long they can keep this up for. Now the next part of this review is going to be the sticking point for some people. And I know there's going to be some fanboys of Samsung, they're going to take me to the cleaners over this. But I've got to be honest, people, you need to know what you're in for when you buy the latest Samsung device. Now, I bought this, I was stoked. I set it up, I put all my apps on, everything was looking cool. After a couple of weeks, I noticed a bit of lag here and there creeping in. And, and then it just started to get worse and worse and worse. And I'd have to say, the lag on this, it's unpredictable and it is bad at times. Sometimes there's no lag, but when there is, my goodness, it just lags like an old granny on the highway. There's enough hardware in this device to make any phone, any software run smoothly. But somehow, Samsung have managed to keep their TouchWiz feeling running through it, even though it's not called TouchWiz anymore. 
So you really do get some moments, like if I open up that camera, it'll just sit on a black screen for a good 10 seconds occasionally. Now I know there would be people screaming at me all over Google+, factory reset, factory reset, to get better Samsung software experience. Well, let me tell you, I don't want to spend 1350 bucks on a Galaxy S8+, Plus. that's how much it costs in Australia. I don't want to spend that much to have to factory reset it every three months. I just want to load and go and not have to worry about it. And that's one area where Samsung has let me down. Now, you can do some amazing gaming. You can do multitasking. And it's not always lagging really badly. But when it does, you notice it and you just want to pull your hair out. And then there's times where it runs beautifully smooth, no dramas whatsoever, flicking through apps, play, gaming, all that sort of thing, not a problem. So Samsung's got a bit of work to do on the software front. They've got all the hardware in there that they need. And the software is falling apart still. Come on, Samsung, we know you can do better. And in saying that, to top off my rant about the software, the software itself has become an enjoyable experience to use. Back in the day, TouchWiz wasn't really that enjoyable to use, but now it's called Samsung Experience, and this is version 8.1, and it is really nice and uh, clean-looking software. Um, the software itself is fun. I love using it. It uh, looks really clean, really sharp. Um, so definitely a mixed bag when it comes to the software. Get the lag sometimes, but a really nice experience on the other hand. Next up in my review, I'm going to talk about the camera of the Galaxy S8 Plus. In short, it is awesome. I can go out all day snapping photos, family outings, whatever and it, I just get amazing photos. They're clear, they're sharp, they've still got that Samsung oversaturation going on, but the camera and the photos turn out amazing, and then when you view them back on this beautiful display, you just, you just can't be happier with what you're getting out of the camera. Everyone would be happy with these photos, and I'd have to say that this would be one of the best low-light performing cameras you can get, as you can see from these examples in the video. So low-light, Great, one of the best for camera phones, for low light shooting and daylight. It's up there with the best. I, I think you're really hard pressed to find a winner out of say the top three smartphone cameras and the Galaxy S8 Plus or S8 is definitely in that top three. One area where I was a little confused was with the video. Now I did a video comparison of the Galaxy S7 and the Galaxy S8 Plus. I mounted both cameras in the car and I went for a drive I went in daylight, twilight, and nighttime, and the Galaxy S7 had better video footage. You can see that. I'll put a link up here. You'll be able to see that for yourself. Make sure you check it out. So without getting too technical, most people, they have a phone. It's their point and shoot. They rip it out and take photos of whatever's going on around them, and I can't say anyone would be disappointed with the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus camera. Now, we'll talk about the battery of the Galaxy S8 Plus, and in short, 3,500 mAh battery. The battery will get me through a full day worth of use. That'll be YouTube, Netflix, Facebook, Instagram, online training, surfing the internet, emails, phone calls, text messages, WhatsApp, all that stuff. On a really heavy day, I'll probably get through with like 10% left, and that's a really heavy day. On your average day, I'll get to bed with 50% left. And the only time I've seen it really drain a lot is if I'm using a video camera and the camera all day, so I go out to the zoo and I'm just snapping photos away all day. Then it drains a bit quicker and I'll probably whack it on charge at around six o'clock if that's the case. But, fast charge, you whack this thing on charge and it is charged within half an hour, you've got enough juice to see it the rest of the night, not a problem at all. 3500 mAh battery, it's a win. So, my final thoughts on the Galaxy S8 and S8 Plus, you can't go wrong. It's a beautiful looking device. It's gonna turn heads, it looks amazing, it feels really good to hold. I would say, kudos to Samsung. They're a year ahead of their competitors in terms of iris scanners, bezel-less displays, um, just the quality of the device itself is miles ahead of everyone else. And they take risks. That's what I like about Samsung. They take risks. It's not ready. They still release it 
and they're gonna improve it. I can't wait for whatever comes out next year. We're talking about a Galaxy S9 or whatever it's gonna be, but I can't wait because everything that's half-baked in this device, and I'm talking like Bixby, the software, um, those things that make it a little bit annoying, the iris scanner, the fingerprint, all that's gonna be improved. So I would say definitely, Galaxy S8 Plus is in front, it's ahead of the game. No one's gonna beat it this year. I really think this is the device of the year for 2017. That's it for this video, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe, all that stuff. I love doing these videos for you, and I'll be back soon with another one. Catch ya.